Welcome back everybody. Today we are getting some glorious rains hitting the garden. Combined with the cooler weather, the greens especially are taking off this time of year. So I thought I'd pick up the camera, bring you guys along with me out into the food forest and show you what's growing on. So starting off right here atop this hugel culture mound, we've got the merit collard. Now this patch is really beginning to take off now. We've got a lot of new growth occurring. Plenty of new growth tips, each of which could be harvested to propagate a new merit collard plant. So this is one of the most abundant greens I have growing in my garden. And here's another merit collar growing at the base of this young apple tree. I'm going to have to remove this plant as it's beginning to take over the tree. But you can see how large those leaves are becoming. Really healthy specimen here. Now check this out. This is the dino tree kale. And there are two plants over here that have not been staked. And just look at the growth on this plant. Absolutely abundant. Taken off like crazy. There are so many greens here that I'm going to have to come up with some new ways to utilize them. But this is a good problem to have. Trust me. They're loving the rain, soaking it up. And once again, each and every one of these growth tips is a new opportunity to propagate a new plant. And let me get a closer look for you guys at the stem of this plant. You can see the purple in there, absolutely beautiful. Purple in the stem of the leaf as well. Over here we've got three different perennial greens. These are new additions to the food forest. These were grown from seed. And I have yet to name these. But you can see just how crazily they're taking off. This tree here is going on about 10 feet tall. And it's still putting off some flowers. And just like with the merit collard, it's just beginning to push out that crazy new growth. Over here I've got a volunteer green that came up. This looks like a walking stick kale to me. But just really nice upright growth. Nice healthy green leaves. And over here along one of the pathways in the garden we've got another nice little hedgerow growing of some dino tree kale. And if we look down towards the base of these plants, you can see a bunch of new little plants getting started. These are all volunteers that came from some of the seeds that dropped when these plants were putting off their seed pods. Over here we got another nice patch of volunteer greens. That's looking like merit collard to me. But you can see all the differences here. We go from a lighter green with a light green to yellow stem to a really curly looking kale with a purple stem to more of a dino tree kale looking plant. Vigorous, big fat leaves. and more of all the above. I've got some vining crops I still need to pull out of here. And once again, you can see all those little baby sprouts down there. Those are all from seeds that were dropped off of these plants, just sprouting like mad. Over here we've got the tronchuda, Portuguese kale. We've even got a little bit of flowering going on on this plant. And these guys are kind of taking over this raised bed over here. 
but I've never attempted to propagate this plant from cutting, but it's looking like that's going to be possible. So I'm going to be taking a few cuttings from this plant and trying to proliferate it out a bit. You can see it's even got a new seed pod developing there. Here's another Tronchuda climbing out of the raised bed there. And once again, see all these little sprouts popping up. Over here, I've got a purple tree collared plant. And the purple tree collards were the first greens that I started growing back here. It started to create all these unique varieties. And you can see this plant here is looking a bit gangly. Sometimes the purple tree collards will do that. This one's starting to grow up this little plum tree here. But the majority of my purple tree collards are concentrated to this hugel culture mound over here. It's growing atop and on the edges. You see here we've got a banana tree, proof that we've already hit freezing temperatures as its leaves have died back, but the greens are all doing just fine. And one of the reasons I like to grow the purple tree collard on the hugel culture is because it helps me to build a living structure. Each year I like to put fresh soil compost and wood chips on these hugel culture mounds. And that woody material that the purple tree collards produce is perfect for just cradling all that soil and keeping that mound built up. And over here on the edge of this hugel culture, I've got some abundant tree kale. And both the abundant tree kale and the purple tree collards really take off later in the season. Unlike the dino tree kale, which is really getting going full force right now. Back over here, I've got yet another unnamed variety of perennial green. This was grown from a seed. And you know something? I believe perennial greens to make a wonderful survival crop for the garden. Never know if you're going to need it. Hopefully not. But it does give you great peace of mind knowing that they're there. And with maybe a couple sacks of rice, a couple sacks of dried beans, a rocket stove, and these greens, I'd say me and my family are set to go for quite some time if we ever need it. Anyway, I just want to take a moment to once again offer up some of the dino tree kale seeds for you guys. Uh, the other varieties are running a bit low. Uh, there's still a few available. But I've got plenty of the dino tree kale seeds. That was the heaviest harvest of seed pods this year. And you can still get them in time for this coming spring. To everyone else who's already purchased seeds, I want to thank you so much for helping to support this channel. And I love hearing the feedback from you guys on the results that you're getting. So now I'm going to go ahead and harvest some of this dino tree kale. And make a nice kale salad for myself. Nice healthy greens. My favorite way to prepare the kale is with a little bit of olive oil, some Himalayan salt, and in about 20 seconds, I just picked my lunch. It's going to take about another minute to prepare. Let me show you how I do that. All right, so I gave these greens a quick rinse and just shook off the excess water. You can pat them dry if you want, but it's really not necessary. Next, I'm just going to destem these leaves. Now the stems are edible and tasty, but for this dish, I'm just going to be utilizing the leaf, so I'm just going to quickly strip the leaf right off of the stem like that. I'm going to just throw those in the bowl for the moment. Alright, now I'm just going to take each leaf and tear them up into little bite-sized pieces. Actually, not that small. If that's fine. It's going to actually condense quite a bit once we massage in the oil and salt. And I'm also going to add a little bit of lemon as you'll see here in a moment. So it doesn't get much simpler. Of course you can get as fancy with this as you want but I'm just going to be using one lemon. I'm probably not even going to use the whole thing. And I've got the Himalayan salt here and also some olive oil can use avocado oil. I do recommend whether it's olive or avocado, use high quality cold pressed oil. Starting with the oil, I'm just going to drizzle a fair amount. 
Just use your discretion. That was probably about a tablespoon and a half. Salt to taste. That was probably about, I don't know, teaspoon and a half. And we'll probably just use half this lemon here. This is a really juicy lemon. I'm not even going to quite squeeze all the juice out. A couple seeds came out. Just going to remove those. Tried to get them out before I squeezed the lemon. And then with a clean set of hands, we're just going to massage the kale. Giving it a nice good squeeze. This is also going to release moisture from the kale. This is going to break down the cell walls, the olive oil and lemon with the salt. Making the kale a lot more tender. And it really doesn't need all that much massaging. That's good right there. You can see how much it's reduced. Just going to give it a little bit more. You hear all that moisture. It's a lot of the moisture coming right out of the kale. And for presentation purposes, I'll go ahead and place the kale in a smaller bowl. Usually I just eat it right out of the same bowl I mix it in. And you know what? I changed my mind. I'm going to make it a little bit more fancy. I'm going to throw some chopped cherry tomatoes on here with a little bit of hemp seed. If you got them, you might as well utilize it, right? I'm just going to slice those babies in half. Add a little color, a little sweetness little flavor just like that a little bit of whole hemp seeds on top and there you go fresh kale salad fresh is best guys and health is wealth so eat the food you grow Alright guys, I don't mean to be rude, so I'm just going to finish my salad, and then we'll end this video real quick. See you in a minute. So with that, I want to wish y'all a great rest of your day. Until next time, this is Dan from PlantAbundance.com. Take care, I'll be talking to you again soon.